What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Room and it's episode number 47 returning today. Man, we've got an absolutely massive episode today so we need to get right to it really. Uh, we've got huge games in the Premier League right now, top of the table by three points and still undefeated. Kicking off with a Merseyside derby away, you know they'd love to be the first team to beat us this season. We'll have the FA Cup third round away at Oakwell against the EFL side. Barnsley aiming to retain that but of course after the Merseyside derby... I don't want to play it. I don't want to play it because I know what's coming. Final Champions League group game. We need to win and Valencia need to lose. Any other scenario and we're getting knocked out of the group. Yeah, I feel like I'm just delaying the inevitable, really. I don't want to play it because <laughs> I know I'm getting knocked out, but got to get there at some point, man. I mean, to be fair, I've been knocked out of the Champions League group stage a few times. So this wouldn't be exactly uncharted territory, but it still would be a massive failure. Anyway, before we do get there, though, first game, Merseyside Derby. Always a classic. Everton away at Goodison Park with the Toffees featuring that Ronaldo. Regen up top. Come on, Liverpool. Yeah, we knocked out the Champions League group several times. Um, in fact, I think I was knocked out of the CL group during the Luton Town career mode once. I think. I might be wrong. I think. But, um, yeah, I, I, I know I've had it happen a few times to me, so this uh, this this would be uh, no, no, no new thing, if you will. But it, it, it's still, regardless, a massive, massive failure. I mean, when you get to this level, and granted, I said it, this is a great group. It's going to be hard. Slavia Prague, to be fair, have lost five on the trot. So we should beat them in the Czech Republic. But I said Valencia's team, five-star, they've really turned it around. Uh, and obviously Bayern, you might say they've been knocked off their perch in the Bundesliga in this save. They've only won, I think, two of the uh, the five Bundesliga titles since the save began. But they're still a five-star side by their own right. So we knew it was going to be tough. But no matter how you look at it, it's still going to be a failure. Even so, like I said, if we, if we can't win the treble this year, we can't win the Champions League. If we go out at the group stage, refocus, recalibrate. What else can we do? Win the free P in the league. And go for an undefeated season. Two things I've never done before. Refocus. Recalibrate. Sam Curtis for the Toffees down the right side. Two red shirts to beat. And as the play continues here. Waiting for that half-time whistle. Hasn't come yet. Oh, what a save, Alisson. And, you know, so often <laughs> when you're waiting for that half-time whistle, it never comes. You expect a goal to get scored. It just happens so frequently. On this occasion, Alisson, massive save. And again, just few of the things we've never done, I don't think we're going to beat that Chelsea defensive record now. But Alisson's saying, boss, hold that fort. Long way to go. Keep a clean sheet here. We still have a chance. So I don't normally like to take a centre-half off. Unless I'm absolutely cruising. And especially if I'm only leading by one. But Colwell is shattered. And I'm going to need him in Prague on Wednesday night. So hopefully, Hato coming on can help us see this game out. As Diaz makes the tackle, and there's Athena Jassafal, surely. Probably at least a booking as well. Might be a straight red, you know. Might be a straight red. I think it would be a booking, but it might be a straight red. Straight red? Straight red? It is indeed straight red. Just thought maybe, maybe because of the position on the pitch, that's one of those moments there. So when you see a foul like that, oftentimes, if it's around the centre circle or in the final third, you know, your third, for example, oftentimes it's not going to be a red card. If you look at the proximity here, Felix is going to go through, if not one-on-one, -on -one, and only really have one man to beat. So that's what's influencing the referee's decision. The proximity towards the goal, where the foul occurs, can often be the decisive factor as to whether it should be a booking or a straight red card. So yeah, that's one of those moments there where, luckily enough, we're in the right area to get that man sent off. Trent with a free kick. Oh, oh man. Scored one early this season against Spurs. We think it would work twice. He could have had three in the same season. Now, that is some talks history. Three in the same season? I haven't been able to do that in about a decade. It's not a dominant victory by any stretch of the imagination. Once the Toffees went down to 10 men, there was never any danger of losing that one. So it is another clean sheet. And it is another game where we fail to concede. As we continue to keep one eye on that Chelsea defensive record of 15 goals conceded in the Premier League season. I, I, I can't see us pulling it off. That would be Doc's history, but 
Most importantly, another win on the books. Right, here we go, final game of the group. And once again, a reminder, there is only one way we can qualify tonight. We win, Valencia lose. Any other scenario, and we are out at the group stage. It wouldn't be the first time, but it certainly would be one of the most embarrassing top Liverpool side, but on the brink of exiting and finishing in third. Have to win in Prague and hope Bayern do us a massive favour of the Allianz. Otherwise, we exit the Champions League at the group stage. Got to hope for a favour and do our job as well. Come on, Liverpool. Yeah, only myself to blame, really, that the, the losses to, to buy and Homer away are the problem. I mean, you know, we 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 should not have lost that game on match day five. I should have just taken a point. I, I should I should have just taken a point as Trent lifts it beautifully, as he often does, and Gakpo does fire in a very early opener to settle some nerves, at least. But I should have just taken a point, man, because that would mean that if Valencia don't win at the Allianz then we would qualify with a win because let's say hypothetically they draw and we finish level on points with Valencia, we finish above and due to the head-to-head -head record. So, yeah, I guess sometimes that's a case of being too aggressive for your own good. I should have just said, yeah, I'll take a point and hope that Bayern can do us a favour on match day six, which, you know, we, we probably would expect to at least get a draw. But now we've left ourselves in a massive, massive hole. Gakpo always gets his second. Fast start here. Well, I, I feel confident we'll win, but it's, it's hoping for a favour elsewhere, and that's never a good feeling. I mean, there's no need to score um, more goals tonight. That doesn't doesn't mean anything. It's head-to-head -head before goal difference in the CL. So, yeah, we, we're guaranteed to finish above Valencia if we finish level on points. But, again, we need we need a buy and win. And um, I think they've won all five, I think. And it'll be typical that on match day six, they'll drop points for the first time. Um but we don't know. No, no goal updates. I've just passing the ball around, to be honest, guys. I'm, I'm just passing the ball around. We've got the goal. I don't want to tire the boys out of another big league game on the weekend. And we don't need to score anymore because goal difference means nothing. So, yeah, just passing it around and hoping Alex Scott at some point is going to come in and say, guess what, Bayern are freeing it up. But at the moment, nothing coming. If we can get a second goal, that will... Uh, if nothing, it's tricky running. Hold on. Oh, what a ball... Yes! At least give us a cushion and some breathing room as well. Well, normally it's Trent's balls that we're salivating over, but on this occasion, it is the Spanish international, well, no, youth Spanish international that could still represent Serbia. That is a cracking ball, that. Lovely through ball to find Trent in space and a great finish to make it to. Yeah, we're going to do our job. I felt confident we would as well. But again, it's, it's only half the job. We still need a favour from Germany. Well, not, not, not Germany, the whole of Germany. Not, not, not the whole of Germany is not playing against... It's not Germany versus Valencia tonight. <laughs> Germany's not united in trying to beat Valencia. As Harvey Elliott almost made it free. But, um, no, no goal updates, but this is the thing we don't know. Like, goal updates are so inconsistent in career mode. You never know. Like Bayern could be 2-0 up, they could be 3-1 down, or it could be 0-0. You don't know. And un unlike before, it's, oh, Jarrell Hato scores a screamer from range. But EA have got to tone down the overpoweredness of long shots. They're too easy to score from. What I don't like anymore is how you might have noticed this. And if you don't play career mode, you wouldn't notice this. But now... EA have taken out the ability to see what the scores are around the grounds at half time. Why? Why have they done that? There was no need for that. So now at half time, you can't check the scores and see what's going on elsewhere. So it's completely uncertain what's happening in Munich right now. So we are just about to hear the final whistle ring out in Prague. There's been not a single goal update from the Allianz. So to be fair, what I didn't realise is that, that might have been a late or early kickoff. So we wouldn't know until we go out to the main menu anyway. But we've done our job. The only question is, did Bayern do theirs? If they failed to win and Valencia got a point, they are through. We are out. We will find out together. My fingers are crossed. I crossed my toes if I was flexible enough. Yes, come on! The great escape! Liverpool are through on their dead! And we'll have the, uh, the draw, I think, for the, um, for the, uh, for the, for the, for the, for the, uh, for the last 16 directly afterwards as well. And it'll come the old fashioned way right now. So wait for it here. We are through and we'll take on, oh well, there's our reward for scraping through on head to head. Inter Milano in the last 16. Certainly not an easy title, but there we go. Because of the head to head record, we qualify in second place. Bayern finishing with five wins out of six. Their only loss coming against Valencia, funnily enough, but that was in the first fixture. 
Thankfully, due to that win of the Allianz, we scraped through. We drew with Valencia at home, but of course that win of the Mestalla means we leapfrogged them on the final match day to finish in th uh, second place. So when you talk about scraping through, I mean, that's unbelievable. Here are the, here are the four groups for you. Here. Arsenal and Dortmund for in Group A, Leverkusen and uh, Le uh, Flecko in Group B, Milan and Man City in Group C, Leipzig and Barca in Group D. And there's the Group E for you once again. As we head to head, that is so fortunate. Uh, Inter, that's who we'll be facing in Group F. They topped it with Marseille in second. Uh, Real and Roma in Group G. And uh, in Group H, Monaco and Juve. So no real stunners there in the group. But yeah, Inter Milan... In the last 16. Lucky, lucky Doxy boy. Yeah, massive helping hand from Thomas Tuchel there. He's on my Christmas card list, no doubt about it. And taking on his former team for the following game. Approaching Christmas, Chelsea here. And a chance to go five clear at the top of the table against the Germans' former team at Anfield. Big contest. Come on, Liverpool. You know, I hadn't touched on this. Um, but everyone's had their opinions on it. The... The, the debate about what happened on Tuesday night in the Bayern-Arsenal game at the Emirates, you know, should it have been a penalty for Gabriel's handball? Was it a ghost handball? Should it have been given? What's the spirit of the game? What's the letter of the law? So on and so forth. I think, I think didn't the referee say something like it's a, it's a child's mistake or something? I have to say, uh, like, it's so hard. Like, you know... I I see it from both sides. I know I know I know it's a real cop out here, and I, I I've said a few things in in the past. Like you know we we should be very as Rodrigo gets a straight red card there. We should uh, we we should we should kind of leave this to the experts if you will. But I think this is one of those moments where it, it's like it's so difficult. It really is because I genuinely see it from both sides of the game. Listen. It, it's it's the Champions League knockout stages. To make a mistake like that from, from Gabriel is glaring. What a ball. Trent, oh, what a save Diogo Costa and pounce on the rebound is is glaring. Um, but then again, it is just a... I, I don't know. It is, is it, would it go against the spirit of the game now? And it's clearly, clearly a misunderstanding, you know. I don't know. I, I, re I really don't know. I'm going to cop out once again. Not the first time I've copped out talking about something controversial. In, uh, in this save. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So I'm not too sure what the best thing would be here. Penalty or no penalty? What do you guys think? Should it mean given? Is it against the spirit of the game? Letter of the law? What do you guys think? Let me know. I don't I don't know. So once again, I'm copping out and saying, I don't know. Yeah, it's so, it's so difficult because again, uh, for example, the Wolves VAR disallowed goal on the weekend. I don't know if anyone caught that, but Poor, poor, can I just say, Gary, you, you know how much I love Gary O'Neill, but Wolves, man, how how unlucky have they been this season with VAR decisions? But last weekend, that, that goal they scored against West Ham, it was disallowed through, apparently, uh, the goalkeeper's line of sight being impeded um, from, from the corner when it was headed in. Again, it's one of those moments where, like, you, you, you genuinely can see it from both ways. Listen, I, I, I would have given a goal, personally. I, I would have given a goal. But you, you can, if you really want to get technical, say, yeah, I guess you could say the referee, oh, Gapo, what a touch, and Jack Clark shot his boss. You could see why the, the, the keeper's line of vision was obstructed there. So you, you can see why it was disallowed, albeit it's incredibly, incredibly soft. You know, when I get asked my opinions on controversial opinions like this, I don't know whether it's old age, I don't know what it is, but I tend to sit on the fence a lot more. <laughs> I'm going to do so once again for the, uh, for the arsenal Bayern penalty debate. How am I not leading this game, by the way? How is it still 0-0? Oh, my goodness. I can't let my goal down here. Wolves have been the unluckiest team in the Prem this season. The amount of, you know, debatable VAR decisions that have gone against them this season. Incredible. And I don't, I don't know how I'm 1-0 down here, by the way. I really don't. <laughs> Seriously, it is ridiculous. I've, I've played brilliantly and uh, somehow I haven't scored. I've got a man advantage and yet I'm, I'm, I'm down a goal. This is, um, this is ridiculous. How on earth am I trailing this game here? Trent, through the gap, there's camera, and I see Gakpo. Just got a bit of space on Deo, who took a little step, and you just can't can't do that. Can't do that against back-to-back -back Ballon d'Or winner Cody Gakpo, because he'll, he'll, he'll find that space to run in behind you. And he's got us a level. Okay, 20 minutes to win this. Come on. A, a draw against Chelsea, ordinarily not a terrible result. But if we want to win this title, if we want to win the 3 -peat, if you want to be undefeated, 
Games like this we shouldn't slip up in. Trent to camera, last chance. Clark. Oh, it's going to drop to McKenzie Crowd. didn't shoot. He says no, but Gagpo will have a go. That's going to deflect me on for a corner. Corner, 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 corner. We get one more chance to win this. Final opportunity with the final kick of the game. Harvey, how are you, ball, son? Whip it in. Gagpo's header drops wide. I don't know how I did not win that game. I really, really don't. Man advantage for almost all of it. And I, not me for that, man. We would have lost it as well. That is two points dropped and a golden chance to go five clear squandered. And directly after the game, we see uh, two players can leave on free transfers if they want to do so in the summer. Uh, those are, of course, Allison and Shira Vader. Shira Vader, we just brought back for emergency cover. And, you know, he does play a couple of games every now and then. But now, yeah, I'm totally fine letting him go on a free. Allison, though, uh, going for his third straight golden goal. It'll be a shame to see him leave on a free, but. He's gone down a rating. He's going to go down at least one, possibly two more ratings between now and years. I, 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 I think for Allison, this will be his final year. Final year in his, you know, approaching late thirties. I will let him go on a free to wherever he wants to go to for, uh, for next season. Anyway, uh, following game, let's try and bounce back with a win here. It's still free clear of Man City after squandering that chance here. Now Crystal Palace away at Selhurst Park, taking on Glasner's side, aiming for a return to winning ways and staying undefeated and top of the table with what will be one game before the halfway stage on the conclusion of this one. Come on, Liverpool. By the way, leading the line for Crystal Palace today, Romelu Lukaku. I could see that. I, I, I could... Oh, Cody, unlucky. He'll get it back, though. Go on. There we go. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. What a miss. Wow. That's one of the worst misses I've had in FC24. Oh, my goodness. What a miss. I was going to say, oh, it's all right. I'll get it back to him. Um, how on earth? Did I missed target from there and put it over? My goodness, when you talk about getting underneath it. Yeah, I could see Lukaku ended up at Crystal Palace. You know, obviously uh, spent, spent time playing in, in London for Chelsea. And I mean, this guy, literally, he'll, 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 <laughs> he's happy to go anywhere and then say that was his boyhood club. But um, yeah, I, I could see that. I could definitely see that. Don't forget when uh, Crystal Palace signed Christian Menteke from, uh, from, from, from Liverpool as well. They've taken chances on senior players in the past. Why not Lukaku as well? Anyway, Jack Clark writes the wrongs. I don't know how on earth I got that so horribly wrong with Cody Gakbo, but there is the opener. Clark with another. He's been absolutely brilliant since coming in. If I could just keep him injury free, this dude would be a. Well, he is a superstar, but, um, but possibly Ballon d'Or winner. To be fair to Lukaku. What a ball, Trent. Yes, come on, that'll do it. Has he ever said, like, you know, X is my boyhood club? Other than other than Chelsea and, and, and Anderlet, where, of course, he began his career. I don't know if he has. I don't know if he ever said, like, Manchester United was my club when I was a kid or Inter was my club as a kid, for example. And it's not actually that uncommon for kids to have two clubs that they support, especially if they're in different countries, you know. So, I don't know. I don't know how much truth there is to the uh, boyhood club memes, if you will. Oh, I should have made that 3-0. But even so, going to return to any ways here. And uh, we, we have kept Lukaku quiet. If Crystal Palace is a boyhood club of his, he's, uh, he's let them down today. Because he's, he's, he's not been on it at all. And we're going to coast it. Oh, what a ball. Oh, what a... Oh, my goodness. I've got to go with him. He should have had a hat trick. I've missed two sitters. Let's see. We've just found a level in there through Rodri. Uh, trying to keep that streak alive of... Uh, uh, of not losing in games he's played in. How unbelievable is that streak, by the way? You know, I've gone on record as saying, in my opinion, Rodri is one of the most important players in world football. And that's not a controversial opinion. But uh, he was like, how ridiculous is that record? Surviving on, on, on Wednesday night, at the uh, Tuesday night, sorry, at the, uh, the Bernabeu, that six-goal thriller. And this game is done. 3-0 win, and we should be going five clear here. Spurned a chance. Last weekend, taking it this time. Come on, don't lose the clean sheet. Don't lose the clean sheet. Lagaka. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, he heard me chatting. He heard me yapping. And I'm like, bro, you can do all your backflips if you want, but you're, uh, you're, you're, you're free one down. Listen, I love to see you still keeping hold of your body, even at this old age. You're still nimble, but... Uh... Oh, Lagaka. Smashes it home. 
Kisses the Crystal Palace badge. Three one. They've got a consolation. Lukaku's doing cartwheels, but off the ground's already empty. This game over, Romelu. Yeah, one game before the halfway stage. Five clear now. It's looking early doors, like a two-horse title race, but not not going to rule out any of the top five right now. And even Manchester United, Chelsea could could still see Spurs making a run as well. So not not ruling out even though there's so many points behind. Not uh, not ruling for how how. Uh, how slow is Lukaku now? I just want to check this. I just want to check because he he was moving very gingerly in that last game. Okay, he's not he's not quick. He's still got the brute strength, you know, ninety five strength, ninety three jumping. Uh, still very strong, physically imposing striker. But uh, yeah, wow, look at that. Thirty five, thirty five years old now, Lukaku. Fair fair play. Still scoring in the Premier League. Still banging him in. Um, even if he's only doing it at a walking pace now. He's still good enough to score against me. Right, following game. Uh, yeah, final one of the first half of the season. Manchester United at home. Uh, let's close out the first half still undefeated. And hopefully, hopefully, go further clear of Man City in second place as well. Come on, Liverpool. Okay, okay it's to Clark. I see Diaz. Can I slide him down the flank? Yes, just about. Can he keep it in play? Yes, just about. Can he find Jack? Yes, easily. Trent. Oh, he was never going to miss that. Trent Alexander-Arnold with the opener. Liverpool in front 30 minutes in. Okay, if we can get to the halfway stage still undefeated, I'll start to believe a little bit more that maybe, just maybe, we could be making some docs history this season. An undefeated Premier League season. Never done it. But there's always that chance of, like in real life, a Watford lurking around the corner. You never know. Mason Mount, lovely ball, Brian Brobby, excellent, excellent response right from kickoff. Manchester United with a level, a quick ball through by Mason. And uh, double M to double B makes it 1 1. Colwell over the top, Jones flicks on, there's Clark. And now Cody, Levi, Ben. Brilliantly done, excellently done. Wonderful move. Brilliant build-up. Great save. Excellent, excellent build-up. And, wow, that is the... Uh, guys, there's half an hour. <laughs> it is a brilliant save for Ronana. But, there's still 20... Where's the ball going? We're not taking it from here, are we? What's going, what's going on? Jack Clark, is he going to take it? What? It's not corner? How is that being allowed? <laughs> Clark shot blocks and sounds you clear. Oh, I would have loved it how we scored from that. The drama that would have ensued. How, that was a corner or a free kick. How is it allowed from there? Goodness gracious. Where's the VAR? If that was Wolves, you best believe they would have called it. Oh no, surely not Alisson with the save and pounces on the rebound. What a bizarre sequence. Man, that was hilarious, honestly. What a bizarre sequence. First, uh, oh, hang on. Cody, go right. Gagpo! Oh, Nana again. Let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. It's going to go up. Doesn't want to do the late save celebration this time. And this time we have put the ball within the quadrant. <laughs> what a bizarre sequence of events that was. As we're still tied at 0 0. Cracking episode today, this is so fun. Oh, and that would have been the icing on the cake. Trent shot the flex onto the roof of the net as it's still 1 1. This has been a brilliant episode today. Can we find a winner or is it going to be our second draw in three? We've got one last chance here for this free kick. Can't, can't use like the, the, the back angle to aim this with Trent, unfortunately, but I'm going to trust his balls are still going to be good regardless. Oh, to be fair, had it gone in, that would have summed the whole game. What a game. Class game. May have dropped two points and only four, uh, five points taken from possible nine. But we're still undefeated at the halfway stage. <laughs> Based on how bizarre that game was, it could have gone either way. I'll take the point. Yep, halfway through, uh, gap cut to three points. We are still top and undefeated. And you best believe, come the end of the season, I'll take this Docs history first undefeated Premier League season I'd ever be able to do. We're not going to match the Chelsea defensive record or beat it now. We've conceded a few goals in recent games, so now up to 11 conceded. So not going to uh, match or beat that. But anyway, three clear in Man City, nine clear in Newcastle. And like I said, this is why I'm not calling it a two-horse race, man. You know how OP form is. Sometimes team go, teams go 
score and run. So not taking it for granted. And Wolves right now, they're, they're finally getting the VAR luck in their favour, deservedly so. They're in the top four. Oh, the bottom three right now, the Saints, Luton Town and Crystal Palace. And as for the League Cup semis, there is an EFL side remaining. Norwich taking on Chelsea and Spurs take on Man City in the other tie. And as for the individual stats, despite Cody's fantastic start, Haaland's had a better one. 17 and 18 currently leading the way. He wants to join the 40 club as an AI player. That'll be another first as well. Ty Stalinga, by the way, with Forrest. This is the second year in three. He's been one of the top three scorers in the Premier League. He's having a great season once again at the City ground. Uh, top assist maker, though, so Liverpool 1 2 3 right now, all on seven. Trent, Cody, and Jack Clark. And they're also level with Anthony Gordon and Bruno Guimaraes as well. And uh, for Allison going for that third straight Golden Glove, as things stand, free clear of uh, Lucas Mantella between the sticks for West Ham right now. Right, so two or three more games today in the first game of the second half of the season. It is indeed in form Wolves right now in the top four. Gary O'Neill's got them playing. VAR is finally being kind to them, and we love to see it. Molyneux, our first game of the second half of the season. Tough one as well. Stay undefeated. Come on, Liverpool. And to be fair to Wolves, you can see where they are fourth right now. This is a really, really solid team, man. Very good indeed. Back fives, I find, notoriously difficult to play against in FC as well. But the, the, the players they've got there, very good. Singo, Batarina, the Batman, Sergio Camello, Anthony Gordon. Uh, this, is a, this is a good side. Really, really good side. Bueno at left back grows nicely in career mode as well. So, uh, yeah, right now they're top four and looking good value for it as well. Yes, but we want to try and knock them out of the top four whilst not being knocked off top of the table as well in the process. Cody fires us into the lead. Kenzie, what a ball. Trent. Oh, Cody for two. Easy money. Trent just took his time, waited and waited, and then rolls through Gakpo for his brace. Yeah, it'll be typical if in a season like this where he's absolutely dominating, he doesn't win the golden boot because Harlan goes ham. But even so, right now, like I said, man, don't worry about what anyone else is doing. Just do your job. Cody is bagging a brace in half an hour. Liverpool tuned it up and surely, surely returning to winning ways here at Molyneux. I really don't know if we can go another 18 games in the league without a loss after this one. Because these ones, these points I should say are in the bag and we'll get a third goal late as well. Trent Alexander-Arnold has been sensational this season, gets another. And a 3-0 win at Molyneux. Hopefully keep up with the clean sheet as well. But most importantly, the win is definitely in the bag now. Yep, <laughs> one down, 18 more to go in the second half of the season. If we're to make Doc's history and have an undefeated Premier League season. But why not? Got to believe, right? No, 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 no. Oh, I, I, I saw that coming before it did. Ben McKenzie goes down. He's probably going to be 3-1. Batterina off lows. Luke Cundall. Oh, no, what a save, Alisson. I thought I got in his way there. But he bails me out regardless. But that injury from McKenzie right there, I'm going to tell you right now, it's a broken toe for sure. The way he hit the deck, the way he stayed down. That's the, that's the negative to what's otherwise been a, uh, a brilliant, brilliant win at Molyneux. Ben McKenzie's going to be done for three months. I'm calling it now. We're going to see directly after the game the confirmation because that, I'm sure, was a three-month injury. Man City with a lunchtime kickoff, by the way, so we won't see uh, whether we've gone further clear or not before we get back to the league table. We'll have a look right now. Fingers crossed. Yes, we are. Oh, no, wait, no, no. They weren't lunchtime kickoff. They're, they're, playing, they're playing the following day. Okay. Well, well first we check the McKenzie injury, which was... Oh, it wasn't. Oh, okay. Four week injury. Okay. Is it? Is it double delight? Did Did Man City slip up as well? I say delight. You can't really be delighted at a four week injury, but it could have been worse. And did Man City slip up as well, or did they keep the gap? At, they did indeed. Double delight. Double delight. I'm claiming it. Five clear of Man City as they must have slipped up on the. Uh, oh, this takes forever to get free. Must have slipped up on the Sunday to. Uh, they did indeed. Mr. Nuno, thank you very much taking points off there at the Etihad Stadium. Five clear and McKenzie's injury is not a broken toe. We haven't had one this season. Tempting fate, but uh, haven't, had, haven't had one all season long. And with the transfer market open, let's let's do one more game today. Uh, just before we get to it, though, it's Barnsley in the uh, the FA Cup third round. Where is Mr. Hot and it's Harvey Elliott. Uh, you know I've had him on the CB development plan to improve the really poor defensive stats and low strength. The strength is still a concern of mine, don't get me wrong, but I think we can take him off the CB development plan now. Uh, now that the, uh, the defensive stats have gone up gradually, it will still take a long time for him to become a CM, just over a calendar year, but I think to begin with, we'll, we'll leave him on balance. We still get a little bit of growth on the defensive stats, 
but uh, all across the board elsewhere. So at least go up a rating, possibly two this season. Right, yeah, let's do one more game today. Uh, Barnsley in the EFL Cup, away in Yorkshire, taking them on at Oakwell. Uh, should be a banker and save passage through to the fourth round. Let's make sure it is here. Come on, Liverpool. Interesting fact about Barnsley's left wing back heading into this game is that Callum Styles, who spent a year on loan with, with my team, Millwall, actually, last season, um... He actually represents Hungary on the international stage. For those that uh, might not follow international football very closely, he was born in Manchester, I believe. But his, uh, his, his grandparents, or one of his grandparents at least, is, uh, is Hungarian. So yeah, play, plays for Hungary on the international stage. You've got Matty Cash playing for Poland. You've got um, Ka Ka Callum Styles playing for Hungary. Like I said before, if you've got a dual nationality, I'm a, I'm a strong, strong advocate for this. Go and play for that country, man. Because let's be honest here, Callum Styles may never end up playing for the England senior team, but he could be a, hung a hungry hero, possibly, depending on uh, on what they might do on the international stage. Yep, strong advocate for it. If you've got a, if you've got a second nationality, and you haven't got much chance of uh, playing for the uh, for the stronger of the two, play for the other. Stefan, I'm looking at you as well. The Serbia door is still open. Oh, and by the way, I don't have any Gibraltar in me. <laughs> we talked about this a few episodes ago. I was like, oh, if I was eligible to represent Gibraltar, Gibraltar I'd, I'd be on the first play. <laughs> you know, I don't think I've got any Gibraltar in me. I haven't done one of those, um, what are they called? An Ancestry, I think it's called. One of those DNA. I haven't done one. Um, but uh, I feel confident I haven't got any Gibraltar in me. <laughs> If you, if you guys are dual national, let me know in the comments section down below. I think dual nationalities are so cool, man. I think they're so... If you've got a dual nationality, I want to know what it is, man. Let me know in the comments. I think it's so cool. I think it's so, so cool. And as Clark gets away, this probably should be two here. Just need Felix to hold his run. He'll get it. Offload. Oh, great. What a save that is. Should be two or three and up here still. Only leading by one. Second goal's coming, though. Second goal's coming. 10 minutes after the restart, still leading by one. Don't really know what my backup goalkeeper, the youngster Corrali, is, uh, is asking for tips on here. But uh, happy to give some anyway, as Felix Afina Jan heads past the Barnsley keeper. Game over 2-0, that'll do it now. It's, it's one of those games where it's like, I often say this, if you're only leading by one, oh, you should never feel comfortable. Never feel comfortable leading by one, because, you know, oh, it takes you on reflection, one mistake, one screamer, and your lead's gone, and it's level. But, you know, more often than not, it doesn't happen. In this game, never any danger. That's going to do it now. 2-0. Game over. Progress in the fourth round secured. Yep, unlike match day six of the Champions League group stage, there was never any danger of us exiting the competition today. Through to the fourth round, we minimal first exactly what we were after and exactly what we do. So for now, both of those objectives and Doc's history remain alive. The treble and the undefeated season as well. The question is, how long can we keep it going for? Well, that'll do it for today's episode of the Realistic Karuma, guys. So big thank you for watching. Really hope you have enjoyed it. And if you have enjoyed today's episode, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode. We'll play through all the January transfer window. We'll have the fourth round, the draw, plus the game as well in the FA Cup. And big games in the Premier League. And the first leg of our Champions League. Last 16 tie against Inter Milan as well. Yeah, treble dreams are still on, but for how much longer? Have a great day, guys. Much love, and I'll see you for the next episode very soon.